Hi, I'm Mary Mammoliti, and today we've stepped out of the kitchen and into the great outdoors because we're barbecuing burgers. Can you feel my excitement? I love the sizzle of butter melting in a pan, the smell of cinnamon while I'm baking. I need to touch food while it's cooking and of course taste it, even if I can't see it very well. To me, cooking should be fun. That's why I've invited chefs from across Canada who feel the same way I do to cook with me, virtually. Welcome to Dish with Mary. Right now, I'm standing in the backyard of the man known as the godfather of the grill, Chef Ted Reeder. Ted is an award-winning chef, author, food entertainer, product developer, and professor. He's also owner and executive chef of the Joint Barbecue at the El Dorado Golf Club in Whitby, Ontario. Thank you for having us. My pleasure. Welcome to Casa Barbecue. You ready to turn on some fire? Absolutely. I can't think of a more qualified person to show us how to make a barbecued burger. Mary, when you came to me and you said you wanted to learn how to barbecue, yeah. I was pretty thrilled. But then you told me that you were legally blind, mm -hmm. and I thought to myself, okay, this is going to be a challenge, and we need to be safe. So behind us here, we have a gas grill. It's very, very easy to work. You turn them on, you can adjust your temperature, and it's very convenient. Uh, for a safety, I would, I would look at when your grill is open. So if you're right-handed, have the right side as your hot side, okay. and the left side as your cold side so that it makes your life a little bit safer. So that when you start to cook, you don't need to be cooking on high, but through sound, you'll be able to hear sizzle. You'll also be able to hear a flare up because there'll be a little bit more of a noise to it when the fat hits the grill sear plates. Mm -hmm. And so safety is everything. Next. But you wanted to go the hardest method I of did. cooking is right to charcoal, yes. which is also the most dangerous. So we have to be cautious. Okay. There's a number of different ways to light charcoal. I recommend using a fire starter. This is a puck and it's in a, it's in a paper wrapper and all you do is you light the paper wrapper and you can find this in barbecue stores. So I've broken this starter. It has slashes on it. Mm -hmm. You can break it into smaller pieces. And I've set my charcoal grill up to have the charcoal on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. Same thing. And the cold zone on the left hand side. And the way I know which is which is there's a handle in the middle of this charcoal grill. So I always, that's my center. Okay, and I've got a cool tip to find that center and that handle. Use your tongs. Use the tongs. So the tongs is like an extension of your arm. There, there you, you go. It, and you'd know where it is. Exactly. Let's light the fire starters. And I'll just take my lighter and I'll pull out. And we'll just get the paper going underneath. And then you tuck it back in and it ignites and you put the charcoal over top. But how do you know when the coals are done? Right. Can you smell them right now? Yeah, you can definitely smell that, that charcoal. When your charcoal's ready to cook on, there should be no aroma. Oh, I, did it not, should be I clean, didn't know that. It should be clean, clean. So you wait till it goes. And it takes sometimes 20, 30 minutes to get your charcoal ready. Mm -hmm. All right? Now we can make burgers. Look how happy I am. We're using charcoal. OK, charcoal, burgers. Oh my god, I'm so excited. All right. Now we've got ground meat. We're gonna work with some ground meat. We're gonna take some gloves. Okay. All right, important thing, I'm fussy. Well, burgers are my favorite food. Okay. At a grocery store, you get lean, you get extra lean, and you get medium sometimes. But that meat has often got a little bit of water in it. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice burgers can uh, shrink. So you start out with eight ounces and you end up with four. Yes. That's because there's other stuff in that meat. So I find a local butcher and you go in there and I say, hey, I need some ground beef. Give me four pounds of ground beef, make it a little fatty and I'll be happy. And when you get that, you've got this beautiful red meat that's studded with little bits of fat throughout it. And you don't need to do very much. You don't have to season it. Okay. When there's fat, there's flavor and it helps bind the burger. So okay. I have an, an ice cream scoop and it's about a four to five ounce ice cream scoop. Could you use a measuring cup? You can use a measuring cup. Like just a quarter as cup, a third cup, whatever. Or a full cup. But okay. the other is grab some meat and make like a baseball in your hand. If you cup the burger in your hands, your mm -hmm. hands should just come together. Okay. All right? So this is like making a giant meatball. Can I, can I get in here with exactly, you? Exactly, like making a giant meatball. Okay, so I'm using the scoop. Yeah, press it down. And you want to press it so that you get the air out of the burger so it helps it stick together. Right. But you don't want to overwork it because when you overwork the burger, you're putting the warmth from your hand mm -hmm. into the burger. And the whole thing about a burger is it should come from the fridge, the ground meat. You should make your patties 
and then you put it back in the fridge and let them rest and stay cold. Okay. And when you go to the grill, burgers come from the fridge to the grill direct. There's no let them come to room temperature. Right. That's not safe. Now, you take this ball you've got mm -hmm. and just drop it down onto the cutting board. Just throw it down. Cup your hand and because that ball's now flat on the bottom, you start to press it out and down. Over top. Over no. top. And you want to go to about an inch thickness. And what I love about this is I get to use my hands. So I can really feel where I'm at. So I'm just going to take the knife to remove it from the cutting board. And you'll put it on some parchment paper. And you're going to put them in the fridge. Okay. And we've got some that we've already done. Okay. And they've been in the fridge for an hour. So we just pulled them out. We're going to take six burgers. Yes. All right. Then okay. we take a little bit of olive oil. Just drizzle each patty with about a half a teaspoon of olive oil. Okay. Take your gloved hand and just rub it all around on the burgers, pressing just gently down. You don't need a lot because too much oil will cause more flare-ups on your grill. Right. And then we're going to flip them over. So we're going to do this on both sides both of the burger. Both sides of the burger. Okay. So I'm going to take a little bit of salt and pepper and garlic. Season the burger lightly, and now we're ready to take it to the grill. Take your gloves off. You don't want to wear the gloves when you're going over the hot coals. Right. All right. Now, what we're going to do on this charcoal grill to make life a little bit easier mm -hmm. is we're going to do a little bit of an indirect cook. So we're going to put the grill rack in, and I'm going to open this damper on the side of the grate so that if we want it to refuel, we've got a zone to refuel. I've oh, got so some now fresh I know why that little side of the grate flips over. Okay. Okay. Learning so much. So now I've got some fresh chives and some fresh tarragon. Okay. I'm going to make a bed. So you're putting beside, that directly onto the grates. But not over the fire. It's on the cool side. Okay. All right? Because it's going to heat up and it's going to give some flavor. So we're then going to take our burger mm -hmm. and we're going to put three burgers in here. And we're going to do what's called a reverse sear or an indirect cook on this burger. Temperature on this grill is running at about 300 degrees. Okay. We've got a digital thermometer. Okay. I've set the thermometer for an internal temperature of 145 degrees, which is mm -hmm. more like medium to medium well. And I'm going to take the thermometer and I'm going to slide it into the center of one burger. We're going to close the lid. Right now, the internal temperature of the meat is 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. And you can get these that are digital that'll come through to your phone as That's well. Right. And those I love because the ones that attach to your phone, you can get the little smart app. They can actually use your screen reader, read what's on the screen. Um, you can increase the font, which I love, which I use a lot. This is phenomenal to me. This is a game changer. This is called a chef alarm. Okay. And so it works great and it's magnetic too. So you can always stick it onto a grill or onto the sidebar or wherever it is. Just leave it out of the way. Nice. We still got three burgers to cook. So you ready to hit the gas grill? I am. I'm ready. Okay. It's preheated to about 500 degrees. So we're going to open it up. All right. Whatever kind of grill it is, stand back, let the hot air come out so you don't scorch your face. Okay. All right. Now our burgers. So we're going to grab this burger. Okay. We seasoned the top side. We didn't season the bottom That's side. That's right. We're going to put it on the grill at the back where it's hot. Now, would you put that same bed of herbs on a gas grill? I wouldn't as much. I'd put it over top of the burgers possibly because underneath the burgers, it, it's going to be too much of a direct heat and then it's going to burn. Okay. We're going to take a little bit more olive oil. Okay. Drizzle over top. Just spoon it around so that it's there. So season it a little salt and pepper. So right now your burgers are on the hot side of the grill? On the right. Okay. Yeah. I'm turning the burners down mm -hmm. to medium low. You can cook a burger at high heat, but then you got more chance of having a flare up and a burn. Just right. go nice and easy. When you're down on the low and you don't have any flare ups, now you can close the lid. Okay. You've controlled the fire. Your temperature's dropping down to about 400 degrees and that's the zone for making a nice juicy burger. Leave it alone. Let's wait for five minutes there. Easiest thing about barbecue is patience. All right. I can hear a little I'm, sizzle I'm hearing and a drop, that, yeah. all right? So burp your grill. Lift it up for just about three inches worth, mm -hmm. right? And just let the hot air come out and then open it up. You can hear that sizzle. That's that fat right? dripping now, onto the, uh, the, fat. the flame. So we're just going to slide under the burger and we're going to give it a quarter turn twist. Using your spatula. That's it, using the spatula. Okay. And I just gently push down on the surface and when you get too much flare up, Turn it down. So it's all about just keeping that heat controlled. That's it. 
I'm gonna take a little bit of bacon, dice this bacon into one inch chunks. I've got a, a soap stone here that I'm cooking on. Okay. And so it's like a little plancha cooking and you can do this on a metal pan or in a fry pan. So that's gonna go there. Or you oh, can do you it hear that there. sizzle? Sizzle of the bacon. I wish that could be my ringtone. Cut this onion in half through the stem. Mm -hmm. You're gonna take a half a red and a half a white. All right, we're just gonna slice it thinly. And we're gonna set them on top of the bacon. Oh, my love language right there. Right, bacon, onion. Hot peppers. Oh, I didn't think this could get any better. So these are the cornucopia, long green Italian hot pepper. And so you just chop that up, put that on top. Salt and pepper. I'm gonna tell you what's happening with the burgers. They're now starting to be the juices. So the juices are starting to come through to the surface of the burger. Mm -hmm. And that's when you're ready to flip. And you're getting those grill marks on the burger. Mm. So in here, in this little pot, Worcestershire sauce and hard butter. And you're just gonna warm it up. And that, you're gonna baste and drizzle a spoon over top of your burger. Oh, you can't hear my stomach. It is growling, growling right now. Growling for a good burger? Yes. There's your tongs. So now, with the onions and the bacon, you just start to gently roll them over. And just mix everything together. Just mix it all together. So your burgers, now I'm moving them up to the front of the grill. Okay. It's a little cooler at the front. And I've turned the heat right down to low. Do you hear that? Yes. Does that mean That's our burgers are ready on the 145 charcoal? 145 degrees internal. And we're gonna just literally, we're now going to go for the sear. So we're just picking them up from the cold side and then moving them over to the hot side of the grill with our spatula. A little Got bit it. of salt and pepper. And then back to the gas grill. And this is a brioche bun. Okay. It's golden, it's got egg, it's beautiful. You can put it direct on the grill. Or what I do when I got the family and I got a whole bunch of burgers, I just put it on the top shelf. Okay. I love this, I'm learning so much. We're gonna let the burgers cook a little longer, and when we return, we're gonna sit down with Chef Ted Reeder. Stay tuned for more Dish with Mary. We now return to Dish with Mary. Welcome back. Chef Ted Reeder and I have moved away from the grill, and now we're sitting under what Ted calls the spatula tree. So Ted, you gotta tell me, why is this called the spatula tree? Well, I, I, I don't like certain barbecue utensils and I get all kinds given to me and to test and to try. And so it can be a pair of tongs, it could be a spatula, it could be a whisk, it could be something that uh, I just find redundant and I don't want to use. And those that I like, they go into my day-to-day -day arsenal and those that I don't like, uh, they get retired to the spatula tree. It is filled back here with barbecues, with grills. How many grills do you own right now? Well, according to my wife, too many. But I would say right now I'm in the, in the mid-70 range. So how many do we have back here in the backyard? Well, right now we're probably anywhere between 50 and 60. And of those, most of them are hardwood and charcoal. There are a couple electric uh, pellet smokers and, and uh, vertical box smokers. And then we have uh, a couple of gas grills. They're here, they're out at my restaurant. We've got them all over the place. Every day I kind of I think of what I'm cooking and then I go pick the grill that I'm gonna cook it on and I adapt the recipe to that grill. I just love to cook with fire. And the more, the harder it is, the more fun I have with it. So how did grilling and smoking become your thing? Well, it starts when, when my dad would, would go to fire up this tripod charcoal grill and, and he, the bottom was rusting out of it and he put some aluminum foil down in it and then the charcoal fell through the foil. I learned all the swear words that were in the dictionary <laughs> that day. And uh, he went into the woodshed and got uh, a rusted out old red wheelbarrow filled it with charcoal, took a shelf out of my mom's refrigerator, and that's what we learned to cook on. And my dad made great steak, he made good burgers, and I was always fascinated by the fire, but I was even more fascinated by the flavor. Mm -hmm. And to me, when, when my dad went to the grill, I drooled. I was like, wow, this is gonna be good. When I got into the world of cooking, I just always gravitated towards a grill, or to the smoker, or to the fire pit. It was just something, I like to do. 
So how and when did you become known as the godfather of the grill? Oh, I have no idea really. It, it's, I've been in the business a long time. I've been barbecuing for almost 35 years. Uh, it started out, I was called King of the Q. I never really liked that moniker. And then uh, one of my management team called me the godfather of the grill and it kind of grew from there. So what is it about cooking over an open flame that, that you're so passionate about? Well, I love the challenge. Uh, the harder it is to cook, the better I think it tastes. And the more challenging it is, the more satisfying it is. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I have a lot of respect for fire. Fire can turn on you in, in seconds. It can cause a lot of pain. It can, it can do some serious damage. And it changes with the wind, with the humidity, um, with the hot sun and the cold winter. And so every time you go to a grill or a smoker, you have to adapt to the weather. And I love that, it's never the same. Not one cook in my entire career outside is ever the same. And every day is a different challenge of flavor. Is there anything that you use to develop flavor profiles? It's a combination of things. I, I, I use my senses for mm -hmm. that, it's very important. So you know, when, you're, when you're challenged with one of those things that are missing and how do you overcome? I have a cook, a new cook, he has no sense of smell. Yeah. And it's very difficult. How do you cook when you can't smell? And I think it's courageous that he wants to be in this business and he wants to adapt his other senses, a disability that affects his career because some chefs might not be forgiving. Right. But if you, can't, if you can't smell it, you can't cook. And you know, that's ignorance. Right. We and should we both be know open. that's not true. Yeah. Right. That's it. Get out there and do it. And it doesn't matter if you can't see, you can adapt. If you can't Absolutely. hear, you can adapt. There's always a way to do something. Always. And I love that. I love that about the, the cooking game. It's meant to be fun. It's meant to be delicious. And, you, and you, you give it your best shot every day. You work hard. Now, you mentioned your young cook. That kind of ties into my next question, the joint barbecue. Tell us about it. Well, we opened in the middle of the pandemic last year. And um, you know, I wasn't doing very much, as a lot of people weren't doing a lot of things. And a friend of mine called me up and said, I have a, a golf course and I have an empty restaurant on that golf course. What do you think about opening a barbecue joint? And so I went out and took a look at it and we started talking about it and we called it the joint. And it's just a simple place. Everything we cook is on live fire. It's, it's a crazy place. There's a cornfield beside us. We got chickens and geese and fox and, and it's fun. And, and it's, it's just, I don't know, I, I find it a magical place. And I like, it. so we went and we set up my grills and some of my smokers and we put a menu together and we do brisket and burgers and that's our focus. And, and I love my customers. I want them to come back. I want them to feel that they get good value and they get great flavor and that when they bite into a brisket, it's got fat and it's got moisture and it's soft and it's tender and you're like, man, I could eat that all day long. Like if you eat at my restaurant and ruin a t-shirt, I've done my job. And I think I'm gonna get a t-shirt that says, man, I could eat that. That's it. All day. All day. After the break, we head back to the grill. Stay with us. Dish with Mary will return. You're watching Dish with Mary. We're back with Chef Ted Breeder. Our burgers are just about done. We're gonna get them off the grill and onto the plate. Oh yeah. All right, take a look. And the greatest thing about the top rack is that you can keep things nice and warm up there while everything else comes together. Okay. Our bacon, onions, and hot peppers are nice mix. If you wanted to drizzle it with some honey or some mustard or a little bit of barbecue sauce, you can do that, whatever you want, right? Don't oh, forget to season a little salt and pepper. Yep. Always. We got our toasted buns. Over here in the charcoal grill, our burgers we seared. They've held on to the herbs over on the side here. Oh so do you want a charcoal grill burger? Do you want a gas grill burger? It doesn't matter whichever one because they both smell delicious. All right, we're gonna give you a charcoal, charcoal grill yeah. burger. You got the burger there. Okay, so burger on top of the bottom of the bun. On top of the bun. Now Take we're layering. All right, little hot peppers and bacon. That's some tasty goodness oh, right there. Right over top. Take your bun top, mm -hmm. and there you are. If you wanted cheese, you could add cheese. If you wanted to put a condiment on it, you can put a condiment on it. Oh my gosh. Or whatever you want. I'm gonna grab my burger. Yeah, because I can't eat alone. All right, there's the burger there. A little bit of that bacon, onion, hot pepper. Mm-hmm. 
a little bit of that Worcestershire butter. <gasps> you want a little? I do. Don't leave me out. I won't leave you out. Okay. Drizzle like that. Okay. Beautiful. We're safe. All right, you take your bun. A frame. Spread your legs like okay. this. Okay. <laughs> Spread right? my legs. You got an A. Okay. Stick your butt out. Okay. Like this. Over. Over. All right. Okay. I flip mine upside down. Flip it upside down. Okay. And take a bite. Oh my gosh. That is by far the best burger I've tasted. And it's easy. You don't have to do much. I'm still in my A stance, ready for another one. Oh yeah. Because this way you don't ruin your clothes. Exactly. You look good. Okay. That way you can have a second burger. If you ruin your t-shirt on the first burger, they may not give you a second one. Because then you'll get caught. Right. All right, we're going in for another? Going in for another. Okay. Mm. It's phenomenal. Oh. This is the best burger I have ever tasted. Chef Ted, thank you for this grilling and thrilling experience. I will never forget this. Or you. My pleasure. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> for today's full recipe, visit our website at ami.ca forward slash dish. Host, Mary Mamaliti. Guest chef, Ted Reeder. Executive producer, Michelle Dudas. Producer, Lance Corbett. Directors of photography, Brian Roy and Kelly Wolford. Camera assistants, Gavin Lee, Braden Rook. Sound recordists, Phil Dransfield, Mike Bonson. Editor and technical producer, Patrick Kelly. Editor and production assistant, Miriam Bakhtiar. Graphics, Mike Smith. Media accessibility specialist, Simone Cupid. Audio post, Mike Monson. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media Inc.